Hi, I'm John McEnany. I'm here today to give you some of my 20 plus years experience on washing and detailing your motorcycle. This will help your motorcycle maintain its pristine looks for years to come. The washing process consists of rinsing, surface preparation, washing, and drying your motorcycle. First step, fresh water supply and good drainage. We always go ahead and rinse from the top down so that any loose dirt, any dust, washes downward. Thoroughly rinse your motorcycle using a low pressure, standard garden variety hose. Next step, surface preparation. I like to prepare the surface of the wheel and the tire with the wheel and tire cleaner. It's very efficient on getting rid of brake dust caused by the brake pad material, road grime, and dirt. It's safe for use on the rubber, chrome, and painted parts. Works very well with white wall tires to keep them looking clean and white. Next, I like to use bug remover for surface preparation. Get rid of the stubborn bug guts, which actually contain a lot of acid that damages your paint, chrome finish. I usually use this on the areas where the bugs have hit the most. Backs of mirrors, fronts of the gas tank, the fender, and the front fork sliders. After applying the wheel and tire cleaner and the bug remover, I like to let it sit on the bike for a couple minutes to soak, soften it so that it can be easily removed in the washing and rinsing process. I use sun wash concentrate and I use two separate buckets. One bucket is for undercarriage, which is going to be dirtier, will have some debris and I use another one for the body surfaces itself. Give it a good squirt. And then agitate it to get a nice, sudsy, bubbly concoction. As you can see, it really uh, suds up. I use separate cleaning material for each area. For the undercarriage, because it is going to be grimier, I use a Harley Davidson detail sponge and spoke cleaner. For the body work and chrome, I use the Harley-Davidson wash mitt. I'm going to start with the body work and chrome using my wash mitt. Remember, we're going to wash from top to bottom. The wash mitt makes it very easy to control wear and what you are washing. I like to start off top to bottom because that way any debris, any road grime goes down. Road grime, you can consider it to be a form of uh, abrasive. And that abrasive, when you're moving it back and forth is going to leave plenty of scratches. Microscopic maybe, or fine, but they are still scratches. Compromises the surface appearance. And over time, the contribution of all those microscopic scratches, fine scratches, destroys the look of uh, the bodywork itself. If I see an area that's very dirty, I don't use the wash mitt. 
I use the HD detail sponge so that my wash mitt stays free of any dirt that may damage the paint. Now I have gone around the bike 360 degrees, all body work, all chrome and brushed aluminum, wheels have all been cleaned with my wash mitt. I'm going to take off my mitt, I'm going to grab my other bucket so I can do the undercarriage and the wheels. Remember, keep them separate to prevent contamination. For the spoke wheels, you can use a wheel and spoke brush. Very effective means to, to clean between the spokes. It's difficult to get your finger in there. The brush is made of a natural material, a wooden handle, and the centerpiece is completely rubber coated. Therefore, there's no chance of scratching anything, whether it's chrome or your powder coated wheels. Dip and keep it clean. All the road grime has been softened up by our previously applied wheel and tire cleaner. Do the same thing to the front wheel. We've got 40 spokes on here. You'll want to clean in between each, each one. As you're, as you're going around, this is, a, this is an excellent opportunity to go ahead and examine all the areas with your eyes and with your fingers. So you're touching, you're understanding your motorcycle. You're able to better, better uh, catch anything that is going wrong when you're touching it and cleaning it on a regular basis. Notice I'm doing from both sides because you can't get uh, both sides with just one swipe. Good reference point to start and end with is your valve stem. I'm going to finish up with the rear wheel. Sometimes you're going to find that you're going to have to rotate the, the wheel assembly itself by rolling the bike if you can't reach into every area. So right now I'm gonna roll the bike to access those remaining eight spokes. Take the time to get inside. Do your wheel hub. That's a usually a neglected area. I've completed the wheels now, front and rear. I'm going to go ahead and begin on my undercarriage. I'm still going to be using my separate uh, cleaning bucket for the dirtier area. And this is where the HD detail sponge comes in handy. It's two-sided. One is a smoother rubber surface that you can use to apply product. or the backside, which is more abrasive, which works excellent on undercarriage to get off road dust, dirt, mud. Again, we work from top to bottom. You're going to have to get on your hands and knees at this point in order to see underneath here. No way around it, actually. Make sure to rinse your sponge quite often to get off the heavy material. The heavy material is going to sink to the bottom of your bucket. So try not to let your sponge sink all the way down onto the debris. Keep it up in your hands. It's safe for all finishes on your wrinkle black paint. When I refer to wrinkle black paint, I mean the textured powder coating that we apply to our engines, transmissions, and inner primaries. Also, don't use the HD detail sponge's abrasive side on aluminum or chrome surfaces as this will scratch the finish. Sometimes you want to use it on the underside of your fenders with a buildup of mud. You've been riding out in the dirt 
gravel roads. I like to clean underneath the fenders. The wheels throw up a lot of dirt and mud. The mud cakes becomes a very solid product underneath there after it's dried. So by being damp and by using a little scrubbing action with this abrasive sponge, we're able to remove it and have a fresh under fender area. Some areas may be too tight. I've got my specialty brush that allows me to get into those tight areas. Works great between the motor mounts and the engine. Continually rinsing to ensure that I'm not rubbing the debris back over clean areas. Using the brush once again to get into very tight areas that I can't with my fingers. This small specialty brush is constructed of the same fibers, wooden handle, and coated inner support piece as my wheel and tire cleaning brush. If you have road tar stuck to the undercarriage, it may be difficult to remove. To assist in removal, I use the HD S100 Corrosion Protectant Spray along with my HD Detail Sponge. I'm almost finished with the undercarriage. One thing of note is the rear belt drive. The rear belt drive we only use soap and water on. You can use your, your wire brush that you use for your spokes, or you can use this sponge. No uh, chemicals needed to spray on it. Although it isn't a Harley-Davidson product, I use a normal toothbrush to go ahead and clean my belt teeth and the belt pulley teeth. This keeps it clean and reduces any noise and excessive wear. After you get done cleaning your bike with it, however, don't reuse it. After we've thoroughly washed the motorcycle, it's time to rinse the motorcycle. As we started, we will always work from the top down. That will wash away all suds, soap residue, and any remaining contaminants downward. Because this is not high pressure, we are able to get around the wheels and wheel bearings without a danger of washing out the grease as if we had high pressure. Handlebar switches are water resistant, but I don't focus on driving any of the water inside as an extra precaution. As you can see, I'm doing my washing in the shade, that prevents water spotting by having too much direct sun rays with my sun wash product. Next, we're going to begin the drying process. I use two manual drying items. One is a quick drying towel brush for between the cylinder fins and the head fins. And the other is a soft drying towel, known as a chamois cloth. In order for the chamois cloth to work correctly, it has to be damp and then wrung out. Quick drying towel absorbs several times its weight in water. So we will begin wiping again from the top down, wringing out as necessary to remove excess water.
certain point there's water that is trapped because the bike has a lean over on the left hand side. I like to straighten the bike up before I begin too much more detailed drying to let the water run off to the right side of the bike. Usually give it a quick shake. Get rid of some excess. And then go back to my drying process. You want to dry this bike fairly quickly. Any water that's left on here could do some water spotting depending on how hard and how mineral filled your rinse water is. I'm in an area right here between the fins where it's hard to get at. I use my quick drying brush to get between the fins of either the head or the cylinder area. It's too tight to get in there with my regular chamois cloth. Again, natural wood handle and protected rubber stem prevent any scratching. This gets the excess water out, and if I need to dry it, I just squeeze it out like that. The quick drying towel, safe for all surfaces, does not shed, does not leave a lint residue behind. I can tell it's full of water when it starts to leave little beads of water behind. Bring it out. Next, I'm going to go ahead and clean and dry my exhaust chrome. The fastest and most effective way to dry your motorcycle is with Harley-Davidson's Hog Blaster. It blows clean, dry air on your bike to quickly dissipate any liquid left after the rinse process. Comes with three different ends. I'm going to plug it in now and demonstrate its use. To review, we've cleaned six areas on the motorcycle. The bodywork, the aluminum, the chrome, the steel frame, and engine surfaces, tires and wheels. Out of the process, we've already completed rinsing, surface preparation, washing, rinsing again, and drying. Next up, detailing. We're going to go back to the workshop for that. Stay tuned.